Hi guys and welcome back to Chengi's World. I'm so excited to have you guys with me today. I'm so excited because I want to just finish this part two video. <coughs> because I know you guys have been waiting for part two. Um, usually when I do part ones and part twos, part one gets a lot of views and part two, well, people don't come back for more. But I'm really hoping that you will walk with me and journey with me um, through both these parts because I really want to impart hope because we're in a season where miracles can happen. I am feeling it in the atmosphere, people, um, that um, great things are about to happen. But I want to just talk to you guys about the dangers of hopelessness. So we've discussed why we get hopeless. We've discussed why Ruth uh, perhaps uh, followed Naomi, that it wasn't always out of nobility, perhaps, but that it was out of her own sense of hopelessness. Because what therefore goes on to transpire um, uh, with Ruth is that um, she, because uh, she did not anticipate that she would meet another guy. She did not anticipate these are the things that unfolded. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video when we're talking about how to regain hope. Now, one of the th things that happens when we're hopeless, one of the dangers of hopelessness, and before I go any further, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share, you know the drill, people, let's do this thing. Okay, love you. Mwah. Okay, moving on. So, <coughs> hopelessness is equals recklessness. Hopeless people are the most reckless people. When you... um think in terms of, you know, I don't think I'll ever be able to afford a property of my own. The way property prices are going up in London or wherever we live, I will never be able to afford to buy my own property. I will never be able to afford my own car. I will never be able to afford what you start to do is become reckless. When you don't see a future for yourself and your financial future seems bleak, and no matter how much you're saving, the prices are going up even more with every passing day, what happens is that you become reckless. You decide, you know what, what the heck? What I'm gonna do is go on holiday four times a week. What am I working for, baby? What am I working for? Um, you start to, um, to not put any kind of disciplines because the Bible says that a pe without a vision, my people perish. <coughs> without um, a sound vision, my people perish. And the reason we abandon vision is when we see no hope in that vision ever coming to pass. And when you see no hope in you becoming a happy wife to a good man, when that hope is dissipated, guess what? You're going to date anyone. Because guess what? I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to settle. I'm never going to have the life that Sally has or whatever has. So, and I've waited. I'm now in my 50s. I'm now in my 60s. I'm now in my 40s. I'm now in my 30s. I'm now in my late 20s or whatever we think. I am never going to get that opportunity. So therefore, I'm just going to date whoever I want, hang with whoever I want and just give any single anybody a chance because the truth is it's never going to happen for me so i'm going to have fun along the way and that is part of the dangers of being of being hopeless because what that does is when we become reckless we perpetuate the hopelessness we perpetuate the thing that we're trying to avoid we we it's never going to happen for me okay then i'm going to have behavior that only reinforces okay, that this is not going to happen for me because the more uh, time wasters and losers you keep meeting, hello, the more it's not going to happen for you, okay? Y you're setting yourself up for it never actually happening for you or delaying the process. You're creating delay in your life. You are creating um, failure. You are creating losses. You are creating the very thing that is feeding your hopelessness and creating, in fact, you know the the I'm trying to find the phrasing. Um, um, you're you you're sort of prophesying your 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 future. You're <coughs> already out, out working out the outcome of that future. So people that are hopeless are reckless. When you abandon hope, you become reckless. 
people who are hopeless are selfish when you are hopeless you 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 start to think about pleasing yourself you start thinking about what will serve you and not what will serve your husband what will serve that person when you meet them how will you know what will serve them how do i need to get myself ready so that i can serve that person but when you're hopeless it's just me myself and that is what i got in the end that that's that's that that that's what's been going down okay when you lose hope it becomes you and what will fill your need today everything becomes instant gratification there is no restraint there is no discipline you are just about making you feel good at the time and 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 um hopelessness is also part of why we settle i'm never going to be a happy wife to a good man so what i'm going to do is um just settle for mr wrong or mr good guy you know one of them will do when you are hopeless you settle and i've seen this even in, in men i've seen men settle for just some girl because i don't have hope that i can get something great you know even women i don't have hope that i'll get something great so what i'm going to do is just settle i'll settle for the first decent person that says hello and sticks around long enough who's not going to ghost me who is not going to um just blah off and go so that's that's the, the thing is is you start to settle and it also starts to make you ill. When you are hopeless, you have nothing to live for. You have nothing to wake up for. There's nothing that you're waiting to happen. You're not expectant. You're not excited about life. You have this lazy, tired energy that only attracts more tiredness and laziness and more of the things that you don't want. But when you are, when you, when you, when you, when you have hope, you, your heart is not sick. And, 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 people were hopeless a bitter naomi was bitter because she lost hope you know she lost everything that she knew understood and was valuable to her and she became bitter when you lose hope hope is the number one thing i you know i meet a lot of women in my life and and i've met thousands and thousands and thousands especially in my career and my profession and 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 and, and in the calling on my life to speak to women as I, I attract so many women into my space and into my life and, and they're so open-hearted and share with me very easily and i can guarantee you the bitter and twisted ones those are the ones that lost hope many years ago very rarely do you find a woman that's just angry and doesn't believe a word that you have to say and challenges everything that Chengi has to say and has issues with that perspective usually if you check it she's been through so much she's been through so much pain and she's lost hope for herself and what happens is when you lose hope for yourself you start to want others to lose their hope you become bitter and, and angry and you start to seek sadness and bitterness in other people you want other people to experience what you believe is your truth and so bitterness is is that thing and and then we spoke about self-sacrifice <coughs> taking the place of christ if you're not going to go down the bitter route you go to the other extreme where you sacrifice everything oh god um i'm just wondering if i'm a little bit to share what i've been sort of experiencing and, and and seeing people do when they lose hope um in the in a way of self-sacrifice in the way of self-sacrifice where everything everything you have you give it away everything because everybody else's cause is bigger than yours it's bigger than your children's cause is bigger than your 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 spouse is bigger than you you give everything away everything and leave yourself leave yourself empty and leave yourself without and naked you leave yourself with nothing to offer anyone new you you know you 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 leave yourself with nothing to offer the the new person who's about to come into your life you've emptied your life you've given everything away and now when the blessing comes you don't have anything to offer that person and it's because of this self-sacrifice i don't deserve i will never have there's no point in me investing in or having this because well it would just be me in this big house it will just be me driving that big car it will just be me you know and 
hopelessness. It, 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 it makes you self-sacrifice and robs you of your future, the future that you're praying for, the future that you want. Because all of these things, some total unpreparedness. You become unprepared for the blessing. You become unprepared for the man that you've been praying for, going online for, going on dates for. You become unprepared. Hopelessness makes you unprepared. And I can guarantee you that if you're sitting there hopeless thinking, I'll never meet a man, I can guarantee you that 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to be right about this, you're not even ready to meet that guy. You're not ready. Your life is not ready. Your body is not ready. Your mind is not ready. Your spirit is not ready. You are not ready. Because whilst you were entertaining hopelessness, whilst you were being bitter, whilst you were self-sacrificing, whilst you were being reckless with your finances, with your your time, with your life, with your mind, whilst you were doing all of these things, you were not getting ready. So what is the antidote to hopelessness? It is the simple truth that I'm going to just share with you. Hopelessness, the antidote for hopelessness is to recognize that there is purpose in the process. I said to you in the first video that it is a process. It is a process, people. You know, you are being taken on a process from the time you prayed for something to the time you receive it is a process. And that process is not um, kairos. It's not, it's not a kairos. A kairos is physical time, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. It is a, it, it, no, kairos is the seasons of God. Sorry, it's the seasons of God. It's the, it's the working out of God. Kronos is the 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. is a physical time. It's not about kronos. It's about Kairos, and Kairos is not about physical time. God doesn't sit in heaven thinking, okay, I'm going to give this person four years, two hours, and three seconds before I manifest their blessing. God doesn't do that. God says, look, I am going to give this person sufficient time to come from this point to that point in their thinking, in their ways, and the time that it takes them to migrate through the process. When they reach, God is always looking not for the time, not for the for the for the for the for the Kronos, not for the 24th of April. This is gonna happen for you. No, he's always looking at your process. How far along has she gone? How far along has she submitted? How far along is she prepared? And when he looks at you and he checks you out and you are ready, you're prepared, your life is in order, you've got this. A man can come into your life and you're debt free, baby. You don't have have any debt because you paid off your debt. You've got your own home. I'm not saying that you've got to have all of these things. I'm not saying that a man can't come and find you in a wretched situation and fix it. Men do that all the time. And that's why we speak about Boaz because we all want that guy who's going to accept us. But let me tell you something about Ruth. Ruth was not just some poor old. She had a plan. She was going to look after this old lady. She was going to find purpose in looking after Naomi and making sure Naomi was fine. She was going to find purpose in, in, in worshiping Naomi's God and being faithful to her commitment to Naomi. I'm talking about when you are acting with, with, with preparation in your heart, when you're acting with deliberateness in your heart, you are more likely to attract the thing that you've been waiting for. And God is more likely to release that to you because baby girl, there is purpose in the process. And if you understand that, if you understand that in my waiting, I have things to prepare for. In my waiting, I have things to address. In my waiting, I have attitudes to look at. In my waiting, I am doing something. So therefore, it's not punishment to wait. It's not... <coughs> poor me, I'll never meet somebody. It is an opportunity because the time between the prayer and the manifestation, all God gives you is an opportunity because baby girl, let me tell you something. Your blessing can come to you because you've insisted, you've stumped your feet, you've cried, <coughs> you have insisted. And we know that insistence moves the hands of God. We know that persistence moves the hand of God because he says, look, be like that widow who came to the judge every day knocking on the door. I want justice, I want justice, I want justice. Eventually he gave it to her just to shut her up. Sometimes God will give us stuff to shut us up. But let me tell you something. Getting the blessing is half the job. Keeping the blessing is the actual job. I tell you what, you can meet a great guy. To, and I've met women who meet great guys and marry them. 
and do not know how to honor and respect that guy and who do not enjoy their marriage because they don't know what it is and how to trigger a man's attraction how to trigger in a man cherishing so in the time that you guys are watching my videos and learning be in that take it on as preparation if you're coming from a place of hopefulness if you're coming from a place of hopefulness and you're thinking to yourself, you know, I'm going to meet somebody. Then this is why you're on this channel. This is why you're watching these videos. Because you're preparing yourself. You're arming yourself. You're getting yourself ready. You know, because he's coming, baby girl. And he's either going to find you like those foolish virgins who were caught without their lamp, oil in their lamp. Or you're going to be caught with oil in your lamp. It's all about, in your lamp, it's all about preparation. It's an opportunity for you to get ready and don't let that man come and find you in a mess because he might marry you he might rescue you he might he might but he might not he might not he might not it could be the game changer for that person so when you entertain hopelessness you are creating an atmosphere around yourself that is only going to create I beg your pardon more hopelessness so i hope that you guys really get the gist of what i'm trying to say to you guys you know in the story of ruth she may have been hopeless and why she followed naomi maybe maybe not like i said no one really knows what was going on in her heart but what she did do is she didn't sit around and nurse emotions she didn't sit around and say, poor me, I'm a widow, I have no one, no one loves me, I've lost my husband, I'm, I'm stuck with this old woman, oh, I want to go back. I'm not saying that she wasn't human, she didn't have her moments of regret, I'm sure she did. But she just got on with it. Well, we can't sit here and die. You can't, just because you're single doesn't mean you've got to sit down and die, you've got to go work, you better have a plan, have a vision, have a dream, build a business, do something. You know, because... <clears throat> that pursuit says I'm getting ready I'm preparing myself I'm I'm growing myself in other avenues I'm I'm gonna be somebody who can make an income who can make money because guess what my husband might not be minted to start off with he might need my support look that's another video okay I might need to support him I might need to to take him on and and, and for a season be a provider and, and for a season support him and, and 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 for a season uphold him until he gets things together so let me go start a business let me go make my life comfortable let me let me prepare let me prepare a life that that somebody wants to be a part of. Let me prepare a mind that somebody wants to interact with. Let me prepare a heart that somebody wants to, to interface with. Let me prepare myself because there is, that is the purpose. That is the purpose for the process. The process is to process you. So be done with hopelessness. Keep hope alive, girl. He's coming. He is coming. That man that you deserve, he's coming. He's coming. So you just keep tuning in to Chengi's world and getting your act ready and getting your little life ready and, and you know, doop, 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 getting yourself ready for, for an awesome future. And I hope this video was really good for you guys. I was excited making it and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So I'm giving you and I'm sending you huge love, kisses, hugs, and I love you lots. See you on Facebook and Instagram on Chengi's world and I will see you guys soon. Love you lots. Bye-bye now.